If you're gonna paint an army of the Astra Militarum for 40k, then almost certainly at some point, you're gonna to want to add some camouflage to your troops. Now, the thing about camouflage, especially applying it, is that it's got a reputation for being really quite difficult. However, it needn't be if you know how. So in this video, what we're gonna do is show you three fantastic methods for applying camouflage to your troops for three very different environments. Ow! It's in my eye! <laughs> It's in my eye! <laughs> The first camo we're going to take a look at is doing urban camo, which is always a popular one because city fighting in 40k is always loads of fun. And for this, it makes sense to start out with a grey undercoat, which is perfect for our uniform in this miniature. What I've used is standard grey from the Colour Forge. And what we're going to do is start out by base coating all the armour with a nice bluish grey. What I'm going to use here is the fang, and then we need a brown wash over the top of that. I'm going to use some Battlemud wash for this, but any brown wash will do. So for example, Agrax Earthshade from Citadel is a great choice too. But whatever you choose, we need to start out with that armour. And as I mentioned, I'm using the fang for this. Now this is actually a bluish grey and I really like this kind of thing for urban uniforms because it adds a bit more colour than just going for greys which can be quite tempting because of the environment it's in but this certainly suits it and it adds that flash of colour which means if you're painting a lot of troops which is probably the case if you're doing the guard it means that things just become a little bit more interesting. So what we want to do with this is neatly start blocking in all of the armour. So I'm looking at plating such as around here and whilst I'm doing this I just want to be careful of that grey uniform because I want to keep it that colour. So it's just a matter of being as neat as possible and looking for all of the armour at this stage. With the base coat done, we can now apply the brown wash onto the miniature and we're looking to get this onto both the armour and the uniform. Now a brown wash is ideal for urban camouflage because it really leans into that slightly dusty, messy nature. So it really reflects all the dirt, all the rubble, all that sort of thing. So definitely use a brown wash in this case. When applying it, be generous, but just keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't pull too much in any one area. That wash is now completely dry and so we can move on to the next step which is going to be to return to the original colours to relayer them this time because the model's gone quite dark and quite murky and so we need to clean these colours up before we then move on to putting in the actual camouflage pattern. So this means going back to the fang first of all followed by using some Mechanica standard grey for the uniform. But we're going to be starting out with the fang and for this the application is going to be a little bit more controlled than before. So I'm going to again use a brush mart opus but this time it's a size zero so a bit more control for this. And this time what we want to do is to avoid recessed detail where more wash has settled and where darker lines are. So for example, on the armor plating we've got just here, you can see we've got that dark line right in the middle in that ridge in the armor. So what I want to do is apply it onto the flat just here. Then when I get to that line, just leave a short distance going to it and skip past it and carry on again on the other side. So really now, it's just a matter of doing this all across the blue parts of the armor. Once that's done with the blue, it's on to Mechanica Standard Grey, and this is going to be for the grey parts of the uniform, so all the fabric that's underneath the armour. And this is the same process here where we're looking to avoid the recesses and also be aware of things like creases, for example on the arm just here, make sure not to go into those, leaving them a little bit darker than the surroundings. The layering's done, so now we're ready for the fun part, which is to paint in the actual pattern on the armour itself. And for this, what we need is two colours. First of all, a near black, so a super dark grey. In this case, I'm going to use some Death Reaper, but if you want to go for Citadel, then you're looking at something like Corvus Black for this. But then what we want to do is to go to a very light colour. So a pure white is too much here, it'd be a bit overwhelming, so instead look for more of an ivory. In this case, I'm going to use some ivory tusk, but again, if you want to go for Citadel, then something like Pallid Witch Flesh will do just fine. Whichever you choose, though, we need to start with a near black. So I'm using Dark Reaper here and go for a really small brush this time. I've actually got one for one that's a bit smaller than previous one. This is a size double zero from Artis Opus. So from Citadel, that'll be something like a small layer. Something with a good point to it, because with this, what we need to do is to lay in what the actual pattern is going to be. Now the pattern can be any shape that you want. It could be sort of wiggly lines, that sort of thing. Personally for Urban though, I prefer more jagged lines because it works more as rubble. So for example, on the armor down here, what we're looking at doing is just some jagged patterns of kind of blocks, but always with angles on them. So just like that and then coloured in so it's like a sort of angular pattern there like that. Now you can do it going across different layers of the armour so for example on the chest here you might have one part here that then goes down to that recessed part just here and carries on down to the front but don't feel like it has to connect across all the armour plates in fact it looks like it's been assembled from different pieces if it doesn't quite do that so for example on the shoulder you could do a jagged pattern just here but then you don't have to connect it as you go over onto that part just there.
Once you're happy with the black shapes, the next thing to do is to move on to your off-white colour. So in this case, I'm using some ivory tusk, and with it, what we want to do is paint a line going around the edge of all these black shapes. So as neat and as straight as possible to get that jagged appearance, just a matter of working away around them, almost like doing edge highlighting, just to get that sharp line to help distinguish this pattern. With those off-white lines now marked in, we can move on to the next phase, which is going to be to highlight all the armour and the uniform too. And for this, what we're going to need is three colours. First of all, we're going to need some rust grey, and this is going to be to highlight all of that armour. And in the process, we are going to go over some of that off-white. So once that's done, we just need to re-establish it. For this, I'm going to use some trooper white. With that done, we can then move on to the uniform underneath, and here what we're going to use is some dawnstone. But first of all, what we need is that rust grey, and to apply it, I'm still using the size double zero brush. And this is going to be edge highlighting across all the armour that we've done. So this includes going over the camouflage. Now this colour will work as a highlight for the black areas, but of course the white is going to look a bit strange, which is why we're going to fix it up later on. But for now, what we need to do is just consider all the armour as one surface for the highlighting, because doing so unifies it as a single piece in the model and just makes it a bit more visually pleasing from a distance. So what we're looking for now is all the sharper edges on all this armour plating, including the black. So for example, just along here, we want to follow that highlight all the way along, but also just go over the white as you encounter it and we'll neaten that up soon. Next up, I've got some Trooper White, and with this, what I'm going to do is just re-establish where the white lines and the camouflage go over the edge, because the edge highlight we previously did has now gone over those, so it's just a matter of a few little dots just on the edges around places such as this. And then finally, using Dawnstone, we just need to go into the uniform underneath the armour to highlight this. So this is going to be all the edges first of all, so for example, just around here, and sometimes using the side of the brush when we can access like that, but also keep an eye out for any creases, and be sure to get those as well. And here we have the completed urban camo, and I've just painted in all the other details in the miniature with black just to neatly frame what we actually painted here so you can clearly see it. But as you can see, doing this is really simple and really fun as well, and of course you can change the colours as much as you like to get all sorts of different combinations. The trickiest part though is painting in that lining that goes around the camouflage patches, but when doing this it's all about making sure you paint things correctly, that you're using the right sort of brush, and if you do make any mistakes, remember you can always neaten up with the colours on the other side. Next up, we're going to take a look at painting a desert camouflage for your troops. And for this one, there's actually a perfect undercoat colour, which is Zandri Dust, because this colour is perfect for desert uniforms, and so it's going to form the main colour for our armour. We'll put the camouflage on it later on. But what we need to do is pick out the uniform underneath that armour. And we want a sandy tone once again, one that's different. And there's loads and loads of choices of different colours you go for here. But I picked out one from Vallejo. What I've got is some green brown. Now, once that's on, what we need to do is wash the miniature to get that depth and definition. And here I'm going for a brown wash once again. So perfect feel for this sort of uniform. In this case, I'm going to use Battle Mud Wash once again. But what we need to do is get that uniform painted in, and so it's green brown that I'm going to be using for this. And what we want to do is, as ever, just get some of this onto the palette. So there we go. And then to apply it, go for a good base coating brush that's about medium size. So I'm using a size one here. And with it, what we want to do is start looking around the miniature for all the bits of fabric that we can find, so all that uniform underneath the armour. So what we're looking at is areas such as this part just here. We just want to neatly block it in. If you do happen to catch the armour in doing this, and don't worry about it, just neaten it with Zandri dust before you continue. With those two parts of the miniature blocked in, we can now go on to the wash. And here I'm once again using a brown wash, so I'm back to battle mud wash here, and it's just a matter of applying it all over that uniform and the armour as well. Once that wash is completely dry, we can take it onto the layering stage because right now you can see it's quite murky and because it's gone darker, both those colours are now looking very, very similar. So we need to separate them out once again. So it's time to return to those original colours by first of all layering some Zandri dust, then we're going to be using green brown from Vallejo. And for the application, go for that smaller brush now. I'm down to my size zero for this, starting out using Zandri dust for this, and with it what we're looking for is all of that armour. So just like usual, what we need to do is make sure the paint's under control and really make sure it's nicely thinned on your palette so that we can keep it under control as we apply it. And as we do put it on, we just need to make sure we avoid those recesses. So just make sure it's ready. And then we're looking for them on the armor. And again, it's a matter of looking for these flatter panels, such as this one just here, painting it all over it until we get to those recesses where we just don't quite want to go into the corner just so it stays dark and so that we keep that definition. <laughs> 
And once that's done, we're then ready to return to green brown. And with this, we want to layer it onto that uniform underneath the armor. Once again, just being careful to look out for any recess detail and carefully avoid it. With this stage reached, you can see the armor is nice and clean once again, and so is the uniform. And so now I can move on to that fun part, which is to put, of course, that camouflage pattern on the miniature. And for this, first of all, what we need is a nice medium brown, and I'm gonna use some Gawthor brown for this. But then I'm gonna mix it up with a few little spots. And here what we need is a very dark color, first of all, so a near black. So I'm gonna use some Death Reaper again, and then we need a near white. So here I'm gonna use some Ivory Tusk. But what we need first of all is that Gawthor brown, and I'm using my size double zero to apply this one. And what we're looking for is just some sort of brown patches, essentially, just some sort of loose shapes that are sort of rounded, that kind of thing, just blobs, basically. Now, I don't want to make these too large because I don't want it to become the dominant color or anything like that. But it's just a matter of getting it thinned down and then picking a starting point and just starting to put it across the armor. So, for example, on the shoulder just here, what I'm looking at doing is just sort of a blob like that and working it out to be around about that sort of size, I think, and then just letting it dry and applying a second coat over the top to ensure it's nice and solid before we move on to the next stage. Once you're happy with those brown patches, it's onto some Death Reaper. And with this, what we're looking to do is to apply some spots across the armor. And this is gonna go across both the colors that appear here. What we're looking for is just loose general shapes, sort of like that. There's no particular pattern or order to it. And we don't want to make them too tightly together across the whole thing so it doesn't turn too dark. But you can see what they're doing is just being applied over here just to break things up a little bit. Once you're happy with those spots, we're then ready to move on to Ivory Tusk. And with this, what we want to do is go over these original spots, but leave just a little bit of the black showing. So almost like a crescent shape. So kind of along there, like that. And with that, the camouflage pattern has been applied. And so now what we need to do is just highlight all the colors we've got on here. And for the camouflage, once again, it's best to think of it as one area for the purpose of highlighting. So think of it like one area of color because then using one highlight unifies the whole thing as a particular piece on the miniature. So in this case, we're gonna use some Shabti Bone for the armor for all those colors that are on it. Then for the uniform, what we'll use is some Middle Stone from Vallejo. But first of all, we need a Shabti Bone and this is going to be edge highlighting. So stick to your small brush. I'm still using my size double zero here. And with it, we're looking for all those sharp edges on the armor. So just make sure that paint's nicely thinned and flowing really well from your brush. Then it's time to start looking for all those corners. And it's just a matter of just taking your time following all of them all the way around. And as you do it, remember, make sure you go over all the colors that we've used for the camouflage. And with that done, all we then need to do is to highlight the fabric beneath using middle stone from Vallejo. Once again, looking for the edges and also any creases that stand out too. And here we have the completed desert camouflage ready for battle in any sort of arid environment. And as you've seen, doing this is really simple and really fun and it really comes alive when you're doing all those spots on it. But just bear in mind when you do get to that stage, don't get carried away because it is easy to overdo it and you don't want to darken the miniature down too much. The final camouflage we're going to take a look at is one for a snowy environment. And snow really does suggest a sort of soft approach here. So what we're going to be doing is more of a mottled application for the pattern on this one. Now, if you wanted a more icy environment, that suggests things a little bit more angular. So you could certainly use the patterns from previous patterns that we've done here and just use the colors we're going to be using now. But for this one, what we're going for is definitely that soft approach. And the first thing we need to do is undercoat the model with an appropriate color. This time, gray sear is the ideal undercoat here. So a really cold, very light gray. It's perfect for what we want to do. But what we need to do with that undercoat on is then pick out the uniform underneath the armor. And in this case, we want a light gray. I'm gonna use some administratum gray for this and to apply it, I'm going for that size one brush once again, because all we need to do for this step is just base coat it in. So all the fabric underneath and around the armor. So as ever, make sure your paint's thin down and ready. And once you've got that sorted out, it's just a matter of looking for all of that fabric and just being as neat as you can whilst blocking it in, keeping that lighter gray still on the armor. That grey's on the uniform there, and so now we can move on to our wash. And this time, what we want to do is make sure the wash is quite weak because the colours here are so light. So what I'm going to use is some Battle Mud wash once again, so a dark brown wash, but this time I'm going to dilute it with some Lamy Medium to retake really the edge off it, make it quite a weak colour, but still to retain the same properties so it still dries smoothly. Now you might be wondering why I'm going for brown here for a white colour scheme, and that's because we want this uniform to appear quite functional. And when designing the colour scheme, my mind was like an alpine forest, so some subtle browns in there will work very nicely. 
If I was going for something a bit more high tech and sci-fi, I might consider more of a blue wash for this sort of thing, but for the sort of feel we're going for here, brown is perfect. So what we need to do is make the mix, and you can see I've got some battle mud wash here on the palette already. I'm using my medium shade brush for this again as well. And what we want to do is make quite a dilute version of this. So I'm gonna go for one, two, three, four, five and six, because I'm looking for roughly two to one mix here. It doesn't have to be exact, but something quite weak like that. What I'm gonna do then is just bring some of that brown into it and start mixing it together so it's really thoroughly mixed. And so what we're looking for is something of around about this kind of strength here. And with that prepared then, it's just a matter of painting it all across the miniature. So once again, I want to get this onto all the armor and all of the uniform, mostly settling in the recessed details, but just making sure it's pushed around so it doesn't build up too much, especially on that white armor. Now once this is on, allow it to dry completely and then go back in for a second coat, the exact same mix, but this time just on the uniform, just to darken it down a little bit more and separate it from that armor. That wash is dry, and so now what we're gonna do is move on to the next stage, which would normally be to do some layering here, but actually what we're gonna do is start putting in the camouflage pattern on the white armor here, because we're going for that soft sort of speckled pattern. And to do this, we're gonna use a technique that inevitably is gonna get some of the color onto the uniform underneath. So we're gonna do the layering afterwards just to neaten that up. But what we need now is a near pure white. So what I'm gonna use is some trooper white for this. And to apply it, we need one of these soft dry brushes, which I've got just here. This is a really small one. The good thing about this sort of brush here is that it has a nice rounded tip to it. and this is an extra small one from Artis Opus, although you can get them from a number of different uh, brands. Here's a slightly larger one so you can see what they look like on a larger scale. It's quite rounded, quite soft, so ideal for the sort of technique we're going to be using, but for this I like the small one just for a bit more control to keep it onto the armour. Now to get this set up, all you've got to do is get a little bit of the paint on your brush as if you're doing a regular dry brush, and then with some tissue just work it into the bristles whilst removing the excess paint until there's hardly anything left there, so really get rid of most of it. And then to apply it is, well, where the real difference is, because rather than flicking it back and forth, instead we're going to be stippling this on in more of a stabbing motion. So what we want to do is go at it like this, just gradually applying it, slowly building it up to create that inconsistent speckled white appearance on the armour plates. Build up that white to this point, and you can see now we've got that really sort of soft appearance on the armor plates. And so now what we can do is layer that uniform underneath. So for this, it's back to Administratum Gray. And this time we're going to be applying it using the size zero brush, because this time we just want more control. You know, we're looking to avoid the recesses as we apply it. So once you've got that paint thinned down and ready, all you gotta do is start looking for those areas. And so what we want to do is start applying it onto areas like this part just here, being careful not to go into those darker areas, just keeping it on the flatter parts where it's a bit more open and also keep an eye out for any creases and avoid those as well. That layering is done, and if you wanted to, you could just leave the uniform here and move on to highlighting it, but because we imagine this as being as part of that sort of alpine forest uh, sort of environment, it makes sense to add a few more colours on there just to break it up a little bit more. And you could use all sorts of different colours for this, all kinds of greens and browns. We're just going to go for a darker green though, and what I've got is German camo dark green, funnily enough, and to apply it, go for a small brush again. So I'm using my size double zero for this. And all I'm looking to do is to add a few little splotches onto that uniform. So this is not the armour, it's just the uniform underneath it. So there are not going to be loads that we need to do here. But what we're looking at is areas such as this part here, and we just want to add a few little patches of this. So just inconsistently applied, almost dotting it on with a small brush like this, just to create a sort of random blob, kind of like that, scattered across the uniform. I'm happy with those blotches, so now it's time to move on to highlighting. And for this, what we need to do first of all is gonna be the armor, and here a pure white is what we need. So I'm gonna use some white star for this. But then for the uniform, we need a very light gray, and this is gonna be for all of it, including those green patches. Here, I'm gonna use some gray seer. But first of all, we need that white. So it's white star first of all, and to apply it, I'm sticking to that size double zero brush. And with this, it's just going to be that edge highlighting that appears across all the armor. So we want to go around all those sharp edges as neatly as possible. So remember to get that paint thinned for the purpose, and just make sure you're isn't overloaded and then it's time to look for those edges. Just keep your hands as steady as possible and just take your time following along each one. And then finally we can move on to grey seer and this is going to be the highlight colour for the uniform beneath. So we're looking for all the edges and also the creases that stand out as well. 
And there we are with that, the snow camera scheme is complete. And as you've seen, doing this is really fun to do with that sort of sponging technique, really, that sort of stippling we did for that whitewash appearance on the armor. And this is something you can certainly take to other troops too, even vehicles if you want that kind of appearance to them. As for the uniform underneath, this is something that you can really play around with and do all sorts of different patterns if you want to. We obviously did that little splodge pattern there with the green and the gray, but feel free to use any colors you want. There we are, three very different patterns for very different environments. Now remember, you can easily mix and match everything that we've done here. So for example, if you really like the pattern we did on the urban one, you could certainly pick the colors for the desert one and use that instead and get completely different results, or even pick your own colors. So for example, greens and browns, if you wanna do forest, the choice really is yours. A key thing to remember though about painting camouflage is whatever sort of combination of colors you've gone for, when it comes to highlighting it, pick the appropriate highlight for the main color that appears on that area. And doing this helps unify the pattern as one part of your model and stops it from breaking it up too much. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel. And if you've ever painted some camouflage, we'd love to hear about it. So be sure to post it in the comments below. Tell us what colors you've gone for, what patterns, we'd love to hear about it. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again very soon.